Okay, so today we are going to build the white touch sensor. So the white touch sensor you can use it if you need one side of your robot to touch something and you don't really care if the other one touches. You can also use it to touch surfaces, for example the outside walls. The reason why you would use it is so you can get feedback if your robot touches something without having the to know if in what orientation your robot is touching it. You can also use it so you can put it one on each side of your robot and this way you know which side is touching because you can only use four sensors on your robot because of the way the brake is made. So you can use it to align yourself in corners so you know that one thing is touching and the other one is touching as well. Okay, so that is the white touch sensor. Let's start by build, let's start building. So what you need to build is four short friction pegs. So those, the small one, the black ones. The long pegs with uh, stop bushing. So those that have a bushing at the end. The long pegs, two of them. Oh, by the way, you need four of them. I don't know if I said that already, but four of those, the, st the long with the stop bushing at the end, and two of the long one without anything at the end. Friction pegs. Uh, axle peg, so the friction one, or the non-friction one, the friction less, doesn't really matter which one you're using. You'll see why. Three 15, size 15 beams. Um, four bent beams with pegs, so those, and two size 11 beams, okay, and the touch sensor obviously, because that's what we're doing. Okay, so let's start building. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the touch sensor and our two long pegs and put one peg at the end of each hole on the touch sensor, like that. So, going all the way through. Okay, then we're going to put the size 11 beam. We want two holes sticking out in the back. So, it looks like this. Two holes in the back. See, one. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. There, so I should look like this. Two holes. Okay. So now we're going to take two uh, angled beam with pegs. Put one of each on, at the other end, so the orange end of the touch sensor. So at the end of the beam, like that, so you should not have anything sticking out, like that, so completely at the end. And we do the same thing on the other side. So you should have pegs facing outwards. Okay. There. So now we're going to flip this, so the touch sensor under, we're going to put our four friction pegs at the holes that are at the end located under what we just made so we put those in here here so the four the four holes like this side away. There. Okay, so we're going to make to put a beam size 15 like that. So we should have three holes sticking out. So you see, the more pegs you are trying to fit in at the same time, the harder it gets to put them in. So there, three holes sticking out 
on each side right so now we flip it back so you have your touch sensor on top like this and we're going to take the two other bent beam with pegs and put one at each end there like that okay so one at each end so now we're going to take care of the touch sensor so you take your uh, axle peg and you put it in the axle hole the cross hole in your touch sensor like that okay and we're going to take the last uh, you know, the second 15, size 15 beam and we're going to put the long connectors pegs with uh, stop bushings at the end and we're going to put those stop bushings at the very end of the axle so here, very end the other one is here okay, see both of them and they're both facing the same direction Right, and we're going to put this beam here on our touch sensor so it should be symmetrical and you should see that the bushings at the end of your uh, uh, beam should align with the holes in the bent they should align with the holes in the bent axle the bent beam with pegs and now we're going to put the, f the size 4 axles through those holes and in the bushings, like that. We're going to take our last beam and do the same thing as we did for the previous one, is to put the long connector pegs with sub bushings at the end of the beam okay. and then we put it like that to so put it inside make sure you're pushing align properly with the with the axle so that's one side that's how it looks like overall alright so you can push one side it's still going to make it work the other side it's going to make it work. It's hard to go back, but it's still going to work. And both sides at the same time, it works as well. If you tr take a robot, then, and use the view menu and see what it does, it's going to work. So, let me show you what I, how you could use it. So, you have this. That would be, like, the angle you want to look at. So, if you already have, like, this, it's going to touch. So you know you've touched this wall. You can also arrive like this fully at the angle and touch both sides. It's going to work. And at, at the other side it's going to work. So if your robot needs to go at the angle and you don't really care which side it is touching, then you can use this one, this attachment. So there you are. That's the wide touch sensor. All right.